everybody. Today I am going to be doing something a little bit different. A couple of weeks ago um, or so I was looking for something in particular and I came across another project that I had made four or five years ago and it was some felt mice. Some of you may remember it, if not I will put a link in the description box below um, to the video where I showed the mice that I've made and they are felted mice and I followed a tutorial by Serafina Fiber Art and it's the first time I ever did felting and I <laughs> I haven't touched it since, so it's the last time I've ever done felting. But what happened was I made three mice. Um, in They were all from the same sort of tutorial, but they all came out three different sizes. So I said there was like a, a daddy mouse, a mummy mouse, and a baby mouse that I'd made from the leftover pieces. Now, unfortunately, before I changed craft rooms, when I was still crafting in my bedroom, Miss Molly when she was a kitten, managed to get hold of the baby mouse and destroyed it, completely destroyed it. Um, so I'd packed them away because she'd not only destroyed the baby mouse, but she'd also started on the mother mouse. Um, but I managed to save that, but I haven't touched it since. So let me just show you what happened to poor old mummy mouse. So this is mummy mouse here. And can you see this? Look. This is exactly how I found her, and this is going back two or three years when this happened. See how it's it's been attacked, but I can, I hope, save it. And I've also got, see, Daddy Mouse, he's fine. He's, he's how he was when I made him. Um, but poor old Mummy, and there's some fluffy bits here. And I'm not exactly sure whether these come off Mummy Mouse or whether these are just what was the remains of Baby Mouse. And Baby Mouse was so cute, was sat in a little uh, jelly mould. But anyway, so I'm going to attempt to try and fix Mummy Mouse and then I'm going to dress them. I've wanted to dress them since I made them. Oh, look, the end of her tail's a bit matted as well. Oh dear. Um, I've wanted to dress them since I made them and I never, because well, this sort of happened and, you know, one thing after the other. She's got a few bits stuck to her too. Um, and I never got to it. So what I've done is I've got some of my goodies out from Crafty Me Shop that Esme sent me and I've got this beautiful blue braid here along with two fabrics uh, I think I may have purchased this one. I'm not sure. They're all from Crafty Me Shop anyway. I have some seam binding from Crafty Me Shop and this beautiful um, lace trim. And I thought, oh, and this gorgeous, look at this satin fabric here with the silver thread. And I thought I would dress both Mummy and Daddy Mouse and then I can set them in my cabinet to look lovely. But I've got to try and fix it. And like I said, I haven't touched felting since I made them. I do have the bits here and I have these tools that I actually, that should have a lid on it, I think, um, that I actually bought when I bought the mouse kit from Serafina Fiber Art. Um, <laughs> I can't remember how to use them. I don't think I'm going to use that because I that's what you kind of make the ears with. I may have to kind of um, fix them, but that's the sort of tool you use for that. And this one has three needles in it. So I may need that. Maybe I'll need to go and watch a video as a refresher, I think. And then I've got these needles here in three different sizes. And by the look of it, I've opened this, so I've used one of these. Maybe it's that one, because see how that one's poking out a little bit more? Maybe I've used one of these in here as well. So this is my intention. This is just a bag that I made up myself because to buy one and have it shipped 
would have been far too expensive. So this is just a bag of rice inside a linen pocket I made. And I'm quite sure my intention was as it got older and wore thin that I would just put another covering and just keep doing that um, or make it an entirely new one. But that's what I use for the, the felting. So I think I will go along and watch, see if I can find the tutorial where I made these and maybe that will help me to use the right tool to fix Mummy Mouse up. Um, and then I'll be back. Uh, I might Once I find out how to do it, I might show you a little bit. But remember, I'm not a felter. This was the first and last project I've done with felting. So we'll see. Okay, so I've just had a quick look and it's this little three prong needle that I need to just um, reattach this felted piece on the mouse. And it's just a matter of going in and out like that. Be very careful with these though, they are very, very sharp. I do recall um, pricking myself with one when I was making it and they are very sharp so yeah so I'm going to have to go all over the mouse to tidy it up maybe daddy needs a bit of tidying up too like I said they've been stored away for so long now and they're so cute I wouldn't mind making another one I'm trying to find whether there's a a store in Australia where I could buy some supplies because postage at the moment is terribly slow so the more local I can buy things the better. Um, see when I first made her I think it was nice and even but because she's sort of been a bit destroyed it's not as even anymore. But that's okay because I'm going to dress her so I won't let that worry me too much. I think see that looks like the same color I think she might need padding up a little bit anyway I'm going to go ahead and do this all over and try and pretty her up and then I'll be back okay so I've patched her up I just added another little bit there because there was a bit of a hollow. I don't think that's exactly the same colour, but like I say, I'm dressing her, so I'm not um, too concerned. So we can move that out of the way now and put these covers on. <laughs> I'm sure that one had a lid. It looks too dangerous to be left like that. Uh, just a minute. I don't know, I'll just have to push it right over there so it's right out of the way. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I still I might just trim that little bit. I can't get that the way I wanted it, so um, I'll have to go watch the other video with the tail part so I can fix it up as well because his tail's a little bit fluffy, but I want to do it with the right tool but I want to just start dressing them and then see what needs doing when they're finished so put them over there for a moment and now what I want is I thought his jacket out of this gorgeous satin piece here and her dress out of this beautiful grey organza fabric. Um, I'm thinking I might need a lining under that. So I'll have to have a little look around and see if I can find uh, something just subtle to put underneath it. Oh, how much of... Hang on, hang on. Because this is a really big piece and although there's a full pattern on it down the bottom, at the top it's quite plain. Oh, and it has a little scallop around it. I wonder, because I want to use, uh, there's a hem on this I think, is there? Or is it just that salvage? 
there's a selvage on this and I wanted to use that around the bottom make sure I've got it the right way both ways are beautiful oh goodness pretty sure it's that way maybe I can use that uh, no I think it would be too distracting because you can see the silver through it although if it's gathered up like that it might not be too noticeable No, it is a bit too noticeable. So we'll keep this one for the man's jacket. I may use a little bit on it for the back of her dress because I'm trying to go for like a Regency style with them, I think. Um, this has got this like an aqua paint going through it in pieces, but I'm not too worried about that. I think the fabric is really beautiful. Um... So, how long do we want it? I will press it to. I want it down to her feet, of course. So, I'm thinking if I cut to the top of this flower here across, that should be nice for her skirt. Just make sure I'm using the right edge. It might look nice. Oh, they're both pretty much the same, I think. I don't think the design goes just one way by the look of it. It can go either way. Mm. Yeah. Although, I think it does go more... No, no, because the, the leaves go in both directions. Okay, so I'm going to cut this about here. Let's say about here. I don't know if I can rip this because of the um, embroidery on it. So I will just fold it like this with all the edges together like that. Okay. If you're a seamstress watching this, turn away because I know this is not the way clothing is made, but <laughs> I'm just playing around crafting. So I'll just cut that straight across there like that. Fold that up. And that should be plenty for her skirt. All gathered, all gathered across like that. So, of course, the Regency style comes like, just like that. Hopefully not too poofy out. Um, and find a fabric to put underneath it. So, something like that. Around there, I was thinking, now I can either use the blue satin, or I could use some of the seam binding I've got. Let's just have a look. You know, like that little piece under the under the chest there. That cinch it in a little bit there. Like that. And then this, I thought maybe I could use some of the lovely lace. And I guess whatever fabric I use underneath it, I could make the little bodice piece and then have like the lace over the top of the bodice piece somehow. Like that. And of course the you know, you'd see the seam binding a little bit there as well. And then they tend to have like jackets that, well, not jackets, but like a cape at the back. And that's where I thought the blue might come in, to have like a blue piece at the back just coming down. And that will help it correspond with the boy jacket. Um, I also thought... 
because it's not a day dress, it's, it's more an evening style. And I'll make some little flowers out of the seam binding for in the front of her ears. And I could also use some of the little flowers off of the trim to decorate that with as well. So that's what I have in mind for her dress. So put that over there. And then his jacket, I thought, now I'm not doing pants for him, so I've got to make sure he's nice and tidy down the bottom. I just thought a jacket would be nice. Um, and look at this, isn't this just beautiful? And so the jackets are fairly long at the back, you know, of the, the gentleman's jacket. So I would have that showing on the back like that. But at the front, they tend to come up real short. So it sort of goes across like that and long at the back. So, um, so that's like that. So that part there would be used at the front of the jacket, perhaps. I'll just continue it with a little high collar and then perhaps... Um, because they have like cravats or something like that under their jacket. So perhaps I can use some more of the same binding like that around the top of his neck and, you know, um, kind of ruffle it a bit like that at the front of the jacket. So he looks rather debonair. <laughs> um, I don't know about a top hat though. I mean, he'd have to have his ears going to the side if he wore a top hat, wouldn't he? Hey? Unless his ears go through it. But, you know, like I said, my first felting, my first mice, I think I did their ears a bit wrong. I'm not 100% sure. Do I put a top hat on him? I suppose I could have one like that, have little holes in it and make it out of the same fabric as the jacket. So, that's what I'm going to do. And because I don't really know what I'm doing, making up patterns and things like that, I'm just, I'm just going to, uh, I might just film stages of it as I do each stage because I really don't know how I'm going to do it myself. I'd love to make some more of these, to be honest. I, re I remember I really enjoyed making these and I love learning new things and the whole idea of dressing them. Mind you, I'm saying that now. Let me dress them first and then I'll tell you whether I'd love to make more. <laughs> You've got a few bits on him. Okay, well, I'm going to go out and work out how to do his little jacket and everything, and I will try and explain that as best as I can when I come back. Okay, I just found this um, fabric. It was actually the lining off a lace dress, and that is as close a match I can kind of get to that fabric so I'll use that underneath the dress and I may use it a little bit inside of the jacket as well so I'll be back soon okay so for the little bodice here what I've done is I've laid the little mouse out like that let me show you down here I've laid the little mouse out I've kind of gone, okay, there's her arm, there's her arm, there's the top, there's the top, like that, okay, and maybe like that, okay, and I've got this general outline of what size she is, but then you can't make something exactly to that size because it would be 
it just wouldn't fit around the mouth. So I'm going to go ahead and add like a quarter of an inch all the way around like that. Okay, and that's pretty much what I'm thinking of doing. And then adding here as well and bringing it down because I'm making like a square cut, I think, but the lace will determine that. And I'm thinking that will be the little pattern for the bodice. And it looks quite large, I know, but by the time you sew it together, because it does want to be a snug fit, um, that should be fine. And because she, like, she's got no curves, um, you can use the same pattern for the front and the back. And they did have like a square cut on the back as well. For the back, um, like there's her ears, there's her head there, there's her little shoulder type thing. I thought I would have the square cut at the back like that. Kind of like that. Then her dress is like that. But I'm thinking from here, I may just have some of the heavier satin. Because you know how they, they did that sort of thing? Maybe just a couple of plates for the heavier satin at the back of the dress. Um, either that or like the dress is there. Just forget about that satin part. That's the dress. We've got the seam binding coming across and having the satin at the back overlaying and just a little bit of it coming around to the front as well. So the front of the dress, like that's that, that's that, like that. There's the gathered skirt. But on the front, you've got a little bit coming to the front like that. I don't know. Just so it ties it in with the gentleman's jacket. Do you see what I mean? So they're the two different styles I'm thinking about doing. Mm -mm. Anyway. I'm going to go press the fabric now. I did just cut that to size. I cut about that much off each end of it because there's a slight dip in the organza and I thought, well, if there's a dip in it, it may as well be right in the center. See how there's a slight dip in that organza? Um, I thought it may as well be right in the center of the front of the dress rather than at the side or something. Try and keep that main pattern there in the center. You see that? That might be a good idea because that's almost where the dip is as well. Ah, oh, right, okay, yeah, that would be a good idea. Try and keep that in the center. We'll see. So that's what's going around in my head at the moment and that's how I made the little bodice for the girl and for the boy. Might as well do it while I'm here and then I can just go away and kind of make them, um, unstrangulate him. Same sort of thing, I guess. You see, because there's barely any curves on them. He doesn't need to, and I have to bring it down here because I've got his tail curling off the desk. So, oh no, we'll just do that. Okay, so with him, we are going to go, okay, like that like that kind of like that kind of like that and like that and like that and like that and like that I think okay so I probably will uh, how am I going to do his okay so the front He's going to need a collar, see, so we'll go like that, okay, like that, like that, and like that, and like, kind of like that, but once again, adding a, about a quarter of an inch all around for that. Like 
Ja. Uh, I'm going to make the sleeves. Uh, am I? Yeah, I'm going to make them all one. I'm not because look, look at the arms. They're all going to be one. <laughs> we won't get that particular. And that can come down, and then I may have to attach a little upright collar at the end. I did want it like double breasted though, like, okay, that one goes like that, but then this side to come further over so it goes like that, so you can have some little buttons there. Does that make sense? And then that'll be his collar like that, up like that, and then you'll see in here will be the cravatty piece in there and then of course the back will be one piece but it will come long because that's how they had their fancy coats back then okay I'm gonna go away and make my patterns and cut my fabric and I'll see where I okay I have cut all my pieces out here that's the back of the jacket that's the lady's dress. That is a scrap. That is the little bit for the back of his jacket. Um, a collar piece. The front of his jacket, but one side will be extended more than the other. And I've, I've sketched down a little picture of what I have in mind. See how his jacket, I'm not sure whether to do it straight across or whether to curve it a little bit, we'll see. Um, that's what he, I'm thinking about a hat, not sure. And that's the lady's dress there at the moment. Okay, I'll go cut some fabric out now and see how I Okay, so this is the back of the little mouse jacket and it's slightly different. See how I did change it as I was cutting it a bit because I realised that wasn't going to be big enough. If you, if you look there like that, it won't even go to the side of him. So what I did was I enlarged it and then I cut it. The, the fabric was folded, so that kind of goes like that like that and I had the fabric folded but then after I cut it out I thought oh I need a pleat in the back so what I'm doing is using that as half of the back and I'm going to cut another one of those pieces so that I'll be able to sew them together like that but only to there so there's a little pleat in the back of the jacket Perhaps I should have done two, but it's, you know, it's just my first go at this. But um, I think one little opening in the back, especially because he has a tail, will be quite nice. So I'm going to cut another one of those. So that was far too narrow. I added about half an inch. And I also straightened that part there up as well. Um, I cut it that that would be half like that but then I've added a little bit extra so that I could make a seam and a pleat down the bottom so I'm just going to go and cut another one of these ones for his the back of his jacket and with that in mind the front will have to be wider as well can you see it probably needs to come out at least half an inch more all right so before I sew everything together, let me just clarify what I have done. I have my skirt pieces. I still need to press. I've got the lining and I've got the outer piece, uh, the, the lining and the outer piece, yes. And I cut the lining on the original hem of the dress so I don't have to hem that at all. And I cut the lining on the salvage so I don't have to sew that at all, just to keep it nice and neat. And for the dress, I have the bodice front and I've got two of these because this lining is quite fine and the lace I'm going to put over it is quite heavy. 
I've, um, I'm going to double the thickness on that so that's the front of my bodice and this is the back and the back is going to be in two pieces and that's because I need to be able to get it onto my mouse and sew it on so what I did was there's my piece there I just allowed another half an inch um, for seam allowance at the back there and I also changed the neck up I rounded the back of the neck a bit rather than having it square like the front so that's the dress part with the skirt I just showed you and this is the back part so I have my two I've still got to cut the linings for these though. So there's my two back pieces, so it will have a slit. Then I have one front piece, like that, and another that will overlap and make like a double breasted kind of effect. And then I have my collar piece, which will be like along the top like that may even be a bit bigger than that he might be able to handle it a bit bigger so it's up like that and then lined as well because they had them quite high didn't they so that's the collar piece that will go like all the way around but not completely to the front it sort of stops at the side a bit um, and this little piece here is for when that's all together that one's going to be like that and go just in the center there as well like I don't know what they call it but it's just that little decorative piece at the top of the pleat of the coat so I need to go and do some lining for that some lining for those pieces and then I'm going to sew it all together then I'll be back <laughs> I'll just show you what I've done here. I've got the two little bodice pieces and I've just sewn them together at the shoulder line. So they go like that. So that's the front piece there and they're the two back pieces and I've just stitched them across the little shoulder lines there and I've done the two pieces because this is lined because it's such a flimsy fabric and then I'm putting right sides together and I'm hoping this works I really am um, putting right sides together and getting a couple of pins and I'm just going to pin them like that in a couple of places and what I was thinking and I hope it works out is to I want the bottoms open to be honest so I can put the the skirt part inside of it so I will probably start here under the arm and sew around there across the sleeve and up there and to there. Is that going to work? Hmm. Uh, is that going to work? I don't know. I don't think that's going to work, is it? with that no that's not going to work um, okay I'm going to have to cut uh, sew them separately and then put them together okay so I'm going to sew up here and down there the same here and down there the same on the other one so that I can put the skirt on and then okay so I've joined the skirt to one of the bodice pieces see there's the little arms inside there and that's my gathering 
that's the right way but I've left the arms that way at the moment I have to attach the other little bodice piece here and I'm trying to just work out the best way to do that so um, I'm just poking the arms into the other arms to keep it lined up at the moment. And then uh, pins. one shoulder piece and then the other shoulder piece and remember I am putting lace all over this bodice so there we go and of course my machine mucked up while I was sewing it's getting really old now so don't pay any attention to those machine stitching because it's just the machines mucking up so I want to be sewing all across the top of the bodice. Uh, do I want to be sewing down the back here? Yes, I'll sew down the back here as well so that when I turn it, that will turn that part in a little bit to enable me to get it on her. Then I can attach it together down there. So I will definitely be, and I want the gathering facing up inside the bodice. So that's, but I only want to sew to there. So we're starting there. And the same on this side, I want that gathering going up inside of the bodice. So I will start there or end there like that so I'm going to start there so up all around the neckline and then back down to this needle this pin here then I'll be able to flip it over and it will be lined and I will hand stitch the rest into place perhaps I'll just Okay, let's hope that works. Uh, I might have to fix a couple of spots up with um, hand stitching because of my machine. So there's the little sleeves coming out the front there and this is the lining piece. So that they have to go that way. Uh, push it through with something so it's easier. Uh, is that right? Oh, no, it's not. Where are they going? That's got to go in there like that. That. And the same in here. Where is it? That goes. Oh goodness, where is it? Oh, there. Okay. <laughs> Fiddly. Okay. So that is the little dress. There's the front, there's the sleeves, and uh, I'll probably stitch the little sleeves by hand. Yes, like that. I'll work something out for them.
So that's the front and although it does have a square cut neck it doesn't really look that square and I'm not worried because it will be covered in lace. That's the inside. I just need to turn that over a bit and stitch that down there. So shall we just try it on? <laughs> Make sure it fits her all right. Okay. It's a bit poofier than Regency, but I, that's okay. I think because it's a fancy dress, we might get away with that. So that... Oh, I'll have to leave a little gap for the tail, won't I? I never thought about that. That will come across. Do we have a pin? No, that one doesn't want to. I need a sharp pin. Oh, come on, pins. Okay, no pin wants to work, apparently. Surely they worked a minute ago when I was using them, or maybe the fabric's too much for them. Oh, goodness. No, not going to work. Okay, that will be attached at the back. Like that. And that will be her. But then... Uh, this beautiful beautiful lace work I will be using how am I going to put that on maybe the large flower in the center there let's just cut a piece out shall we and of course these are from crafty me shop on Facebook these beautiful fabrics and lace See, that could work there. Take that top one off because I need, to, I want to do some cinching in with this as well, like that. Yes. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to leave her like that for the time being and I want to get on with the jacket now. So, which is pretty much the same sort of thing. I will be they're the lining pieces. So what you do is you make your jacket uh, I'm going to sew from there to there so that will be together and then these two that will be stitched along the shoulder there that will be stitched along the shoulder there to start with Alright, so there's our little jacket and I've attached the collar. So you can see the two front pieces here and the two back pieces and I've left them open a little bit and then I've just sewn the little collar piece on like that. And I've done the same for the lining here exactly the same sort of thing so now I'm going to put the right sides together and I'm going to pin them so we want our seams fairly matching up fairly well but if I put the corner to corner it might be a better idea 
so and then the corner there and then because they're different fabrics might need to ease that in just a little bit but it should be all right and then taking those two there, uh, which way are we going to? That needs to go down, I think, doesn't it? Are we going to take it down or up? Okay, we're taking the seams up. Pin and then over to the front there. There's no interfacing or anything like that. I'm not going to get that fussy. Oh, some of these pins. Like that, all the way over. To there, and round. And it seems to me the, inter the lining is just a little bit bigger than the fabric so I'm just going to allow for that and what I mean is just little overlap just a little bit because I wouldn't want the lining showing on the outside um, I cut the back shorter than the, the front see because there's a lovely scallop there so that will have its own little hem I think yeah, I think I'll do its own little hem. Uh, is this how I want to do it? Yes, I think it is, because I didn't want the problem with the sleeves that, I'm have, that I'll am that i have with the ladies' bodice. So I hope it works. Maybe I'll just, uh, um, because those ones should be joined to that one there. So how's that going to work? This is when I wish I was a seamstress. <laughs> Let's just have a look at those folded up and across. See, that's considerably bigger there, isn't it? Why? Shouldn't be that much bigger. See, the sides need to be joined. How do I join the sides? Do I just do that and then maybe I just take it to there and then I'll have another look. Maybe I'm just going to so up the front, around the neck, and then down the other front, and then I'll have another look. Alright, so I've stitched that together, and once again, it's the sleeves that I can't work out. So I'm hoping I can turn all this in, though, because I may have to unstitch that back piece. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I can turn this through. So let's just 
Oh, I hope I can. <laughs> I might not be able to, I don't know. We'll see. I know there's a way to do the sleeves, I just can't work it out today for some reason. Uh, I'm sure this will need a press. When I'm done, oh good, that all turned through, but like I said, the sleeves won't be turning, they won't be done properly because they, I just couldn't work those out. What's that? That's not the sleeve. Where's the sleeve? Oh my, is that it? Oh okay, I think I got it there. So that's the sleeve. Oh, I hope it fits him after all this. Oh, I should have trimmed, cut into that. So that will, but I need to go back in here and around that corner. Okay. I'm going to go and take it all back through again because what I forgot to do was <sighs> oh my goodness there okay I think we're getting it here we go where's that one that one's in there okay what you need to do before you turn it all through, of course, is trim your corners down like that, and any excess seams. You need to also cut carefully. in 20 sharp corners and this is that little collar piece just need to get in there This seam here. Cut that off. And then under the arm, see that's where it wasn't turning properly. You need to cut in there as well, under that arm. Like that. So I think we've got it. We've got the front of the jacket, we've trimmed the two corners off, under the arm, cut the corner off our collar piece, that's not really a curve so we don't really have to put little notches in. <sighs> don't really want to cut there because, um, oh I should. I don't, just a bit, just a bit, I don't want to ruin it, okay that should be alright, I think I've got them all got under the arm, yep, and then I'll turn it through <laughs> again and see how we go, let's get rid of that first though, okay. and we have the jacket there like that there 
is the other tail of the jacket. And there is the front of the jacket. And here is the sleeve. And then we need the other sleeve inside. And we've got that. We need the other sleeve inside that one. And okay, that looks weird, doesn't it? <laughs> Uh, it will be pressed. I hope it fits him. Goodness, after all that. Oops, hang on, I need to have our little collar piece out. Like that. And that's the front of his little jacket. Oh, I want to try it on, see if it fits. I really, I really hope it does. And then I'll have to do the, something with the sleeves. Come on then. Let's have a look, see if it fits him. Where's his arm? Doesn't want to go through. Why? Oh, okay, there we go. Okay. Mm. This little arm now. That we gotta do it the way men do it, don't we? Oh it looks a bit big. Oh no. What can we do? Mind you. Hmm, a little bit big, isn't it? I wonder if I can put a seam in the back or something. The sleeves will be a bit shorter, I guess, when it's done. So I want the front like that. Like that. A little cravat. I feel like there's far too much fabric in this. I feel like it needs to be like that, perhaps. At the back. Oh, my battery's running flat. Okay. I don't know about that. I like the dress on the girl better, I think. Uh, still got to have his little bit there. Far too much fabric unless I take it in. Maybe I can take it in. At the sides. Did that do it? I took it in. That may be better. I'll take it all off and I'll take that underarm seam in much more. Okay, so I've just tried them on. Um, the basics are finished. I did add another little piece in the back there um, of his coat. And this little piece here is what is going to go on the back there. And I thought I might just put two rhinestones holding that in place. So that's his little jacket. I ended up folding the sleeves in and using a bit of fabric glue inside to hold those in place. That's all I could think of. It still needs to be pressed and I will put some, I'm not sure whether I'll put little rhinestones or I don't think I've got tiny buttons but maybe pearls or something. 
these clothes once they're on are not going to be coming off so I will you know it'll be closed they're not coming on and off because the mice will get ruined and the same with the little dress I will stitch that on at the back there uh, and the same thing here I've just I've put a little bit of glue in there but I will I have this pretty grey lace here and that was from Lynn Harris and I thought maybe I could do a, a little tiny gather and gather around the bottom of her sleeve maybe around the neckline because I'm not I'm just not sure yet how I'm going to do it so I just wanted to show you they do need pressing let me just show you inside the dress how I finished that So it's all, there we go, that's probably easier. All the bodice is lined, all the dress is lined inside there. And so that's how that's done and I'm quite pleased with how they've turned out so far. Although the dress was so much easier than the little jacket. Uh, let's take it off now dressing these sorts of things it's like dressing a baby you have to do it very carefully because although they have a wire armature inside of them I don't know how much bending that sort of thing can take so that's what I did I just made a little lined piece um, where that split is in the back of the jacket and I made the lining slightly smaller than the actual fabric so that it wouldn't be seen see how you can just see a little bit of blue there a little bit of blue there and I've stitched it across there and that's the back and then I'll put the little oh, what is that sort of thing called I forget what it's called I'll put that on the back there and then buttons on that and that will be finished unless I decided to make a, a hat or something. I was wondering whether I should use some of this lovely braid. Uh, it's so, you know, I could put a bit of that around the neck of it to jazz it up a little bit or on the sleeves perhaps. But then that makes it a, a lot more blue than this because I thought about doing that as well putting that if I put some of that there perhaps and then a little bit of gathering around the arms and the neck and maybe because I was playing around with this maybe just um, you know a little flower or something not to overdo it too much and then a couple of flowers in her hair and of course at some I'll make some flowers as well because that's going to be his little cravat isn't it okay but I'm not going to film all the decorating part I feel like this may have taken far too long but you've seen how I've made them and I think that would be something that would interest people and the rest the rest like I'll probably put the lace around there once it's attached to the mouse because that's really quite, they're really tiny, you know, to get um, needles and things into. I feel like I should have like, an, you know, those wooden eggs that you stitch with. I feel like I should have something small, maybe something, you know, like that, that you could use to stitch. I'll have to look around and see. But at the moment, that's what I'm going to do. And they don't have to be, you know, completely the same. They're just similar. Okay, so I've got to go and press it and I'll come and show you when they're finished. Okay, so I have finished the mice. And this is the little girl, or should I say the mother mouse. I've put the same binding from Crafty Me Shop flowers in her hair. I have a bead cap with a large crystal in each of those flowers. 
and then I've put two rows of the vintage lace around the top of her gown but the first row of lace has gathered seam binding underneath it as well and that's from Crafty Me Shop. I also made her a little belt out of the fabric from Crafty Me Shop so that she would coordinate a little bit better with Mr. Mouse. I ruffled up the vintage lace and put it around her sleeves. I gathered the bottom of her sleeves in a little bit um, just so it would all sit nicely and that's the back of the gown there and so that's my mother mouse and I think she turned out rather pretty considering how um, dis how much in disarray she was at the beginning um, needed a lot of work so that's mummy mouse I'm going to have to find her name for her I think a little tail hangs out of the bottom of her dress and then Daddy Mouse is he's a dapper mouse. He's very um elegant in his lovely brocade, I'm going to say, jacket. He has a top hat that I have made for him. He has his lovely ruffled lace shirt with a cravat at the front of it. It's very debonair, isn't he? <laughs> Um, we have our six buttons and they're actually bead caps. I'll bring it up a little bit closer. Bead caps with a spacer bead on the top because I didn't have any fancy small buttons for him. And that's the back of him and there's the little piece on the back as well with the buttons. And so he is all done as well. And I, I need to find a name for Mummy and Daddy Mouse because I fully intend to make some daughters for these two mice. I absolutely loved making, especially the dress. And although she is rather plain compared to her husband here, um, I think that's fine. If I know they're not regency regency but if you look at photos of regency fashion the men always seemed much more overdressed than the ladies so I think this works out quite well I think her face is quite sweet actually so I'll need to um I'll need to find a name for them both so I hope you enjoyed this video and um I really will have to for source somewhere I can buy the felt in Australia here so I can make some more of these because I really enjoyed making it and I thought it was very therapeutic and you know you can play little stories in your mind as you're making their clothes and things so take care everybody if you've got any ideas for names put them in the in the comments that would be very helpful and um, I'll see if I come across a couple that I like so take care everybody and thank you for watching bye <laughs>